Dear student, welcome to our first lecture in the course of plagiarism and scientific writing. This course is targeting postgraduate student in the College of Dentistry, University of Baghdad. The outcomes for this lecture understand the plagiarism, its type and how to avoid Learn the writing methods used to avoid plagiarism. Know the referencing style according to the requirements of College of Dentistry, University of Baghdad. What is plagiarism? It is a wrongful appropriation of another language, thoughts, ideas, or expressions, and the representation of them as one's own original work. Any creations of the human which include uh, the new thing that is either published or work in the industry is covered under the intellectual properties, which is the creations of a human intellect. This covered two branches, industrial property and the copyrights. The copyrights is the exclusive legal right granted by the creator of an original work which has been published to determine whether and under what cr condition this creation may be used by others, which means that if you are working on a paper, for example, literature review paper, and you found a figure or a table in one of the papers and you want to code that in your paper so you have to grant the permission from the creator the original author to put that in your paper and this copyrights have to be submitted with your manuscript for the journal that you want to publish your work in it. Types of plagiarism. The first one is mosaic plagiarism, which occur when the structure and language of the sentence or paragraph is similar to that of the original source. Few words and phrases from the original source document are utilized. However, the originality is maintained. The second one is plagiarism of text or word for word plagiarism or direct plagiarism or a copy and paste plagiarism which occur when the exact sentences, phrases or sections are used and presented as original thoughts with or without acknowledgement of the source. The third one is self plagiarism which occurs when an author cites their own previous published original scientific research without appropriate acknowledgement and permission from the publisher, which means that the published work has different copyrights, one uh, related to the author and the other related to the publisher. So even the author cannot re uh, uh, recode from his original previous work without the permission from the publisher. These three types of plagiarism can be detected by the software used to detect plagiarism such as Turnitin. The fourth type is plagiarism of the idea is the most difficult to be detected uh, plagiarism because the author may not directly copy words from the original source but employs the same ideas, thoughts, or conclusions without acknowledgement. The last one is duplicate publication, which occur when the author simultaneously submit the same data to different journals without clear indication to the respective editorial committees. None of the journals which uh, receive manuscript for publication agrees that the author could submit their manuscript 
to uh, another journal at the same time. So what to do to avoid plagiarism? First, you have to acknowledge the original source by doing correct citation. Second, expressing ideas and findings of someone else by your own words. There are different methods used in writing to avoid plagiarism. The first one is quotations, which means that a word or a group of words taken from a source without any change. These words must be identical to the origin, so you can just copy them and place them between quotation marks and then attribute to the original author, which means citing, put the citation uh, of the main source in, in front of. The second is paraphrasing, which means rewriting a passage from a source in your own word to change its language while keeping its content and citing the original source. The third method is summarizing, which means decreasing the length of a text while the main points remain. The original source must be cited. So these three methods of writing is used to avoid plagiarism. Why do I need to take from a reference, which is the purposes of quotation, paraphrasing, and summarizing from other references in my work? First is to provide support for claims or aid credibility to my work. Second is to refer to work that lead up to the work uh, you are now doing. So even any idea or any scientific idea need a base for it to begin from. And this is the, the uh, advantage of the old work and to refer in on old work in your work. Other point is to give examples of several points of view on a subject. And this refers to the controversy that's open uh, a new question for new work. Other point is to call attention to a position that you wish to agree or disagree with. And this is the position in your discussion to discuss your results and how your finding is agree or disagree with other findings. Other point is to highlight a particularly striking phrase, sentence, or passage by quoting the original and this is uh, uh, can give an advantage in quoting uh, definitions uh, specific phrases in your own writing another point is to distance yourself from the original by quoting it in order to cue readers that the words are not your own and finally, to expand the breadth or width of your writing. And this is required in writing the thesis. Of course, you have a big chapter of the literature review that you have to put different opinions in it to uh, introduce it in your thesis work. What should I do to cite a work from a reference in a scientific way. So the helpful steps for quotation, paraphrasing, and summarizing is, firstly, read the entire text for several times to address the key points and main ideas. Second is summarize the single main idea of the essay in your own words. Third is to paraphrase important supporting points that come up in the essay. And lastly is to consider any words, phrases or brief passages that you believe 
should be coated directly. If you follow these steps, you will do a good job. Now we are going to go through the source using techniques and much more details. First, the quotation. Quotation or direct quotation is direct borrow of the textual material taken from a source. As we said before, it is the same words and in the same style, borrowed directly from a source and will be and put between two quotation marks. The direct quotation is an acceptable but very simple type and the lowest frequency in published writing in comparison to other types of source used, such as summarizing. Direct quotation required a high level in academic literacy, uh, in academic literacy because it miss using its misusing lead to unlinking between the quotation and surrounding text. This is because that the sentence, when you uh, do it, you, you, you do it in your own style, while the quotation has been done by the author's style. So you have to link between what you write in your own style with the uh, uh, author's style in the same sentence. The acceptable percentage of quotation in any scientific writing should be less than 10% of the total, unless it will consider uh, uh, the direct quotation and uh, direct plagiarism, sorry, and it will not be acceptable. When do I need to do direct quotation? First, when an idea in the original source has been stated in a distinctive way that you feel if you paraphrase it, it will lose its main point. Second, when the statement from the source is more concise than yours. Third, when the reference is well acceptable in the field that you feel this quotation will give more to your own work. This can be much more acceptable for, as we said before, for the definitions or quoting the terms from, um, an, uh, from uh, previous references. Step by step to do quotes effectively. First, the writer needs to select a suitable passage for, from a source for quotation. Second, adding appropriate transitions between your text, your writing sentence, and the quoting or the quoted text. Third, omitting parts of quotation so that the quoted part fits into your sentence. Fourth, making any necessary morphological, syntactic, or orthographic changes such as changing word forms, word order, or upper lower case letters, and signaling them appropriately between quote quotation marks. Five, short quotation is acceptable when integrated within a sentence, whereas a long quotation is more acceptable when addressed as a separate sentence. So this is an example for you how you can do direct quotation for this orange uh, sentence in your own sentence which is given in this example. I'll leave you to read through this example carefully and see what we suggest for the solution. Also, 
you can see more examples in our textbook barely 2011 which can be found in page 65 so enjoy the examples another source using strategy is paraphrasing which means express the meaning of a text or passage using different words especially to achieve your greater clarity in relation to your writing so what is the advantages for paraphrasing first it is a more detailed restatement than a summary which focuses concisely on a single main idea second it is better than quoting information from an undistinguished passage because you are as we said that your passage is in your in your writing style while the quoted passage is on the main origin style third it helps you control too much quotation and last the mental process required for successful paraphrasing helps you to grasp the full meaning of the original passage what are the characteristics of a good paraphrasing first the sentence structure and the word choice should be altered however the basic meaning of the original text should be retained and at the end you have to uh, reference put the reference or the source and acknowledge it correctly however the errors in paraphrasing could include first no citation for the source reference second only few words altered without changing the structure of the original sentence and this can be detected by the uh, plagiarism softwares second only the uh, voice is changed which means active to pa passive voice or vice versa but the original word maintained this is also plagiarism fourth the tense of the sentence is only altered without changing the words and five there is distortion in the meaning between the original and the paraphrased text and this is completely wrong there are different techniques in doing good paraphrasing first using vocabulary synonyms such as idea has different synonyms like concept belief conclusion begin as also start comments second changing word class this if you uh, change the word class you have to take in your consideration to change the position of the word in the sentence from a grammar point of view for example explain if present in the original uh, sentence you can change it to explanation technical as an adjective can be uh, used in its noun form like a technique third changing word order if you read carefully through this example the best explanation for the mechanism of two three generation can be obtained by studying the signaling process of the pulped cell I do it like that understanding the signaling mechanism between pulp cell, between cells could help in identifying the pulp regenerative process you can do your try to change or paraphrase the sentence according to Anne 1999 there is six step approach to paraphrase a sentence first read the text carefully second circle unfamiliar words or phrases third 
find their definitions using the dictionary or glossary. Fourth, read the text again, replacing unfamiliar words or phrases with their definitions. Five, read and rewrite the text. Finally, edit the paraphrase, checking for error and errors and cohesion. This is an example of a paraphrase. This is the original text, which I highlight the sentences in it. It consists of three sentences. And this is an example of a legitimate paraphrase, which you can look carefully how the first, second, and third sentences been altered to give a good paraphrase example. This one is an acceptable summary for that for the original sentence, while the a plagiarized version show that only some words has been changed without changing the word the uh, sentence style. For more examples about paraphrasing, you can look in the textbook as we mentioned it before in page 50 and chapter 17 uh, oh, sorry chapter 1.7 uh, summarizing in page 56 now we turn to the last part of <clears throat> our lecture which is referencing why do I need to do references or the purpose for referencing First is to link knowledge between what is already known in the field with my work. So I have to stand on a good base when I say that I have a new idea because any idea have to be linked with an old and older ideas to, to say that yes, I have a new idea but it is linked with the already uh, known in the field. Second, it help uh, in find or help in finding the source if the reader required much more details. And this is the transparency in uh, uh, that yes, I I cited an information from a source and I put a good citation so the reader can reach to this source. In an easier way and what we say in the beginning of the lecture is to avoid plagiarism because I acknowledge all the time the uh, ideas that I already taken from the literature by using referencing according to the guidelines of the University of Baghdad the Harvard style is the recommended style for referencing and the thesis writing. So I am going to give you an examples for the Harvard style and uh, how the citation should be done in your work. So there is uh, something that I need to add that uh, you can use uh, one of the uh, softwares use for the referencing such as an EndNote and you choose the required style such as the uh, Harvard style and the software uh, will automatically uh, cite the reference in your document uh, in the same style that you choose uh, but I'm going to um, give you some examples of how the reference appear uh, by either if you want to do it in, uh, manually which is I think it's a nightmare it's not an easy task or uh, the uh, by using the software so the first example if your reference uh, has only one author so in the text the reference should appear like this the surname of the author comma and the year of publication while in the list of reference or the bibliography list, it appears like this. 
the surname of the author, initial of his uh, uh, first name, then the year of publication, name of the um, uh, of the paper, the name of the journal, or the, sorry, the title of the paper, and the name of the journal, and then volume and uh, page numbers. If your reference has two authors in the text, it appears like this, the surname of the first author and the surname of the second author, comma, and the year of publication. While in the list of references, it appears like surname of the first author, his initials, and surname of the second author with initials of the first name, and then years of publication, the title of the paper, uh, and the uh, name of the journal, or uh, it's not the full name, which it's appear like the uh, uh, abbreviation of the name of the journal, then volume, and the page numbers. If your uh, reference consists of more than two, so in the text appear like the surname of the first author, et al., and the year of publication. In the reference list, the, it's appear with the surname of the uh, all uh, surname and initials for the all authors, then the uh, year of publication, the title of the uh, the paper, and the name of the journal, the uh, abbreviation of the name of the journal, uh, volume and page number. This example is for. This, uh, if the reference is a book, in the text it appears with the surname uh, of the first author followed by etal if the authors are more than two and the year of publication and give like the uh, similar to the reference of the paper but with the uh, name of the uh, followed by the year the name of the book and then the publisher. If the, your reference is a chapter in a book, so in the text is appear with the surname of the author of the uh, author of the chapter. So if the author of the chapter is more than two, so it appear with the uh, surname of the first one, followed by etal and the year of publication. Then it uh, appear with the surname and uh, initial of its all. Uh, author, then year of publication, and the uh, uh, title of the chapter, followed by in and the uh, authors for the book, and then the title of the book, and the edition, which edition, and followed by the publisher of the book. The examples that we mentioned in the previous slides are almost uh, put at the end of the sentences. So when we have a sentence that we uh, paraphrased and uh, cited from a uh, reference, we put the uh, examples that we mentioned at the end, but we can use the reference at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, so the reference can be used with the surname of the author without initials and then the year in the beginning of the sentence. There is no need to add the reference at, and so also there is no need to add the reference at the end of the sentence. Because you already mentioned that at the beginning, such as, OK et al. 2008 reported a delay in odontoblast differentiation and TGF beta R2, receptor 2 means, uh, mutant mice. For this purpose, there are many and uh, many verbs that can be used for the uh, citation, and they are called the uh, reference verbs, such as argue, claim, find, report, state, point, differentiate, discuss, explain, express, notice, suggest, introduce, identify, compare, and etc. So this is, the, or the verb that I want to choose is depend on what the author do in his work. So if they 
do an argument so I can choose that uh, uh, somebody et al. Uh, like this year argued that or if they give a, a claim about something so somebody et al. this year claimed that or if they find something uh, also somebody et al. or somebody year found that and etc. So it's like this. I can use uh, these verbs or any other verbs uh, which can be used for referencing. These verbs can be used in past or present tense, such as Smith 2013 argues that or Cove 1999 claimed that. But how can I uh, differentiate or if I use it with the past or any present. So, any present tenses indicate that the reference is new and still valid. The idea, I mean, is still valid. While if the uh, past tense may suggest that the, uh, uh, the reference is old and the, uh, the idea is out of date. So, it depends on your argument. Uh, in giving different references and uh, 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 explaining the work in uh, different times so you can argue or using the verbs to indicate give indications for the reader that this idea is old and this one is still valid now this is the end of our lecture today thank you very much for your kind attention this, uh, these are the references that I used in preparing this lecture. Hope you enjoy your time and all the best. Bye-bye.